I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. I'm joined today by Alex Dilladay, the uh, Director of Operations at EPFL. EPFL is a customer of Ampladata. Ampladata is a client of ours, so we were interested in sitting down with uh, Alex and understanding what they do. Alex, uh, tell me a little bit about EPFL and what you guys do. EPFL uh, is the Swiss Federal Institute for Technology. It is based in Lausanne, uh, just near Geneva. Uh, and by the lake, by the way, it's a very nice place. Uh, it's a university uh, with something like uh, 8,000 uh, students. Um, and uh, in various domains uh, like uh, IT, uh, life sciences, architectures, and so on. And um, this is where it all started with the Montreux Jazz Festival project. Why don't you tell me a little bit about the Jazz Festival? The Jazz Festival uh, is held uh, every um, July in Montreux. Uh, all this adventure started 45 years ago when Claude, Claude Nobs decided to uh, create, uh, let's say, a Jazz Festival. Since then, uh, a lot of artists have played at, at, uh, at Montreux, and currently we have something like 5,000 5, hours of concerts recorded and uh, that are today on uh, analog tapes and digital tapes because uh, Claude Nobs is very keen of technology, and in the early 90s, he was the first to uh, record the Montreux Jazz Festival in HD. And this is a very nice um, asset because we can see today um, a lot of concerts in a very nice resolution. From years ago? From years ago, yeah. Of course, 45 years ago, we didn't have the same type of media that we do today. Absolutely. There are something like uh, 12 different formats of um, videotapes and almost the same in audio. And um, today, the equipment to read all those uh, tapes are getting very old and uh, it's time to switch to technology because uh, everything is aging and in a couple of years, uh, everything will be lost. So all this had to create a challenge from the IT perspective, right? Our goal was to make the archives accessible. So it means that um, in an educational environment, accessible means that uh, you go on your computer, you click on a folder and then you want to drag and drop an asset. Uh, if we had a professional type of environment, it means that you have, a, you have to have professional equipment, professional tapes, and it takes a long time uh, to access the, the content. So we decided to move to a traditional IT, IT way of managing the content, like, like we manage uh, all the files, emails, and so on. But I guess going to the IT infrastructure had its own set of challenges because IT storage systems weren't really designed to handle this sort of archive. No, absolutely. So at the beginning, uh, when we started the project in 2010, uh, we didn't find the right technology to move forward because we had two problems. Of course, one was to put the archives online, but also to sustain the archive on the long run. And um, digging into all the technologies, uh, of, of course, the, the cost of the technology was very important huh? uh, because, uh, as I said, this project is sponsored. So it means that uh, we have to find and uh, to be uh, very um, accurate of the money that we use. Uh, we decided to go for, for LTOs because it was cheap. Not the ultimate solution, but it was a first step for us, at least to save the archives. The first step then was to use the LTO format. What changed to open the, the door to a disk archive like Ampladata systems? In 2010, I met with Ampidata um, during the tech tour. I didn't know about Ampidata before. Uh, I met with the CEO and he explained a little bit uh, what they are doing and what was the approach of uh, their system. And suddenly I said, okay, those guys, they have something new that I have never seen. Well, what were the key things about Ampladata that made you think that there was something new that would allow you to move to that type of an architecture? Well, the two elements that I discovered at the beginning was really the low power uh, capability of the system, because for us it was really a key element, because compared to LTO that consume no energy when they are in a safe, of course, uh, having a system that consume low power was really a key element. And then uh, their bit spreading technology was also something that struck me because uh, suddenly I thought, okay, maybe with this technology we can do something uh, very fast in terms of access. So that was the, the, the start of the relationship with Ampidata. Well, then after you met with Ampidata, this opened up the opportunity to move away from tape and, and really start considering disk seriously. What was your next step? We have different use cases. Okay. Of course, there is this archiving um, uh, project in which the goal is really to sustain the archives on the long run. And for that, uh, the low power uh, um, feature of Ampidata is very important for us, uh, also to test how it will behave on the long run. And this is part also of the 
the project and we are, we are working in innovation. So it means that we also have to uh, make some bets and uh, try to understand deeper the technology and how it, it moves a long time. But also we have um, uh, the right to use the archives uh, at EPFL for uh, educational research. So it means that at some point we have to have the archives online on the campus. Uh, and later on, we have a third project of building what we'll call probably a Montreux Jazz Lab on the campus. It will be a, a new building dedicated to media innovation. And uh, inside this, uh, this building, there will be uh, a Montreux Jazz Cafe and a backstage for live concerts, concerts and other type of uh, cultural um, uh, activities. So it means that uh, the system in the long run will um, be accessed uh, internally on the campus um, like uh, regular web service uh, to access the data and, uh, and uh, give to, to, to the researchers all the information they need to uh, make their research on the archives, but um, also uh, streaming capabilities because uh, in, this, in this place uh, we will uh, definitely uh, play uh, all the archives so people can discover them and navigate and discover and uh, enjoy this, uh, this patrimony. Well, what you just described is a very mixed workload, and in the past that would might take two or three more uh, storage systems to really accomplish and, and manage that requirement. Uh, what about Ampladata made you think you could do it, do it with one system? For us, Ampladata is an all-in-one solution, meaning that uh, with the same system we can manage the archives with a different with a type of uh, uh, specification and requirements. We can manage uh, like a regular file system storage with different rules and then streaming capabilities with another way of doing things. And, um, and the object-based model that Ampidata is developing is very well suited for this type of, um, of mechanisms because we can, we can really manage uh, the way and the raw capacity that we have in the system in the best way um, that is possible to do. So where are you now in that process? What, what part of the system have you implemented? Currently, we are in the stage of acquiring the content and uh, feeding the Ampedata system with it. So in the long run, what we want to do uh, is to ramp up the system. In fact, the two systems, because uh, we, we, are going, we are ramping up two systems at the same time uh, for replication reasons, and because uh, the value of the content is so high that we want to have two systems to do so. And, um, and uh, we are ramping up the system, we are commissioning the nodes as uh, we move forward. So every, every month we receive uh, uh, new um, LTOs with the new, new digitalized content and we put that on the system and we move forward uh, like that for the next two or three years. I would think disaster recovery is really important for you guys. You can't recreate this work, you can't reassemble musicians from 45 years ago and re-record. Uh, absolutely. So. Um, this is the reason why we keep the LTOs, because currently we don't know uh, how this system will behave in the next five years. So this is also, as I said, an innovation project. So it means that we have the, the, the chance, a fantastic chance to uh, test a new technology in a real environment, which is very demanding, as I said, because of the use cases that we want to, um, to tackle. You know, people often think of these type of storage implementations as long, laborious processes. How did the implementation process go for you guys? Well, I've noticed I don't have a lot of details to give you on that because uh, it was, I mean, immediate. I mean, the longest uh, activity was really to uh, order the, the equipment that we need, like the racks, the, the power cables, and the routers, and all the equipments that we, that we need. After that, uh, setting up the system was pretty straightforward. So did it take more than a week? A couple of days, yeah. Well, how easy was it overall? It was pretty easy uh, because um, um, in fact, we started the system uh, with the, the minimum capacity that we needed to start. Uh, and uh, the goal is to, um, to have one petabyte installed in the long run, and it will take us a couple of months to ramp up the system. But it's not a problem of MP data. It's just a, a question of feeding the systems with the new tapes that we are uh, acquiring uh, each month. Is speed important for you today? Today we are in the first phase of archiving. So definitely uh, speed is not the key element. Mm -hmm. uh, streaming and access will come later, probably early next year. So we'll have more feedback to give you at that time. But currently, I mean, managing all the files is just, just fine. Let's talk about power efficiency. You've mentioned that several times. Why is that so important to EPFL? Well, at EPFL, uh, we have uh, strong demand from the IT uh, department to reduce the power consumption. 
because we have so many servers that are running in, on, the, on the campus, so it's really, uh, it's really a problem. So uh, we wanted to uh, stay in the same line and having for our Montreux Jazz Festival archives the same philosophy. So we decided that um, really the system that we would choose for, for archiving the stuff was really uh, low power. So what we are going to do, and it's not in place now, but we are really putting some monitoring equipment so we will have a very accurate understanding on how the system behaves uh, for the different use cases that we want to put in place and how uh, we can optimize the power consumption uh, regarding all that. Alec, thanks very much for joining us today. Enjoy your time in Fort Worth and thanks for making the trip over. Again, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. For more information on Ampladata, please go to their website at www.ampladata.com.